two other things we want to talk about <laughs> yes. today. The first one is that there's another 3D printed house. It, you know, it is so hard to do a podcast and not talk about um, this topic because I feel like it's it is... It's starting to get a little old. It is, it is more and more prevalent. Um, I feel like every time somebody does it, they submit it to the news. Like, wow, look what we did. And then it gets exciting for a second and then everybody realizes, yeah. Yeah, they've been doing this. Yeah. Um, and it kind of dies down a little bit. But there are different... Here's the cool part. $6,000, less than 6000 in materials. Mm. So That's pretty darn cool. And so what I wanted to ask you, because there was a picture attached to the uh, article that you sent, which looked like a large gantry yeah. standing over like the entryway to somebody's house. And that yeah, was kind of like huge. the final stage. <laughs> what about um, modulars? You know, like if you build a you know prefabricated home, you have certain parts of that that are built off-site and then brought yeah. in. Um, what could 3D printing do for like modular applications for a house? Like instead of um, waiting for the concrete guy to come and pour your foundation, you could do it and you know do it in 3D printed yeah. and then do something. Are there really, options for that? I don't know. Um, I don't think there are options. I don't think those are the ones that make headlines. But as a technology, I think that's probably where it makes a lot more sense. Yeah. Like prefab homes and just keeping this gigantic, we're talking like 100 feet by 100 feet, massive 3D printer in one place and not trucking it all over the world. Is that the point right. of a modular home, though? A modular home is built inside in a dark warehouse and the goal is to make a house as big as you can and as cheaply as possible that can fit on the back of a truck and i think weight would come into question mm. there if you're print, uh, moving cement but also i don't think that a 3d printed home will ever be faster to build than prefabricated big pieces of plywood and just putting something together that's also really light to transport you might be right and i wasn't thinking about the weight mm -hmm. um the article mentions that to answer the time question, it saves 70% in time and in material costs. In comparison to a home built on location. A but not a prefab home, modular home. Where everything is in shop, you have cranes going over you, you can move everything, everything doesn't have to be mobile. I don't think it's comparing itself mm -hmm. to that. You know, that's a good point. I, uh, I was reading some article the other day of China who they are building hospitals and homes and like structures for people like within a day like well they're actually building it off location and installing it there yes. in a day because they have like home factories right where they're building like prefab structures and then carting them out to be able to i believe it was quarantine people or house them or hospital them or whatever because of you know the coronavirus you know, talk about um, antibacterial uh, 3D printing materials. Print so, their house with it. You know, Print China homes. But that's, but that's a real concern for hospitals. Yeah. Somebody comes in with something that is uh, spreadable like that, and uh, it can live on hard surfaces for days. So that could be on the side of a bed railing, that if that is manufactured from that type of material, yeah. it doesn't retain the... Yeah, and if they continue to eat bats, that's how it spread, I believe. Maybe right, you make a bat like cage. <laughs> make the bat cage out of your anti-microbial 3D, 3D printing 3D material. print housing for your wild animals so that... Uh, yeah, oh my goodness. Yeah. You guys have taken this a place that I did not expect. <laughs> I have been, apart from this one like news story that I read, I've been staying completely away from all of the coronavirus it's, it's hard to hysteria. It. It's hard because yeah. it's everywhere. Um, but I'm trying not to get caught up in it. But just um, thinking, that is a practical application. Coronavirus aside, hospitals, places like that, where, again, yes. where you have those hard surfaces where you know they are constantly disinfecting schools. Yeah, and it was a great way to tie the first two stories together. Yes. So but back to the 3D printing. Well. <laughs> back to the 3D printing. Back to the houses. Building homes with a 3D printer is awesome for custom stuff, but in a mass produced environment where you're going to use a lot of angles, a lot of squares, and you're already in a factory building them, I don't think it's the fastest option. When you go to transporting it also, if you can tr make it in a lighter concrete that yeah. is easier to move around, absolutely, but yeah. So, and I, I, and I think we've talked about this before, but it's gonna be a while before we're driving through the suburbs of upstate New York where we are and yeah. see Modular 3D printed homes on large scales. I don't think you'll will think, see any modular. Oh, you say or, or any 3D printed homes. I think that where this has the most practical application, like we said before, are underdeveloped countries where yes. resources are scarce, where 
um, housing is scarce and you need quick temporary shelters. I or had a thought though. Your priorities in that regard. These houses in particular are interesting because they're fire resistant because they're made out of concrete. They're also severe weather resistant. So Australia maybe Australia brush fires would be perfect. Hurricane um, <laughs> hurricane prone. New New Orleans New Orleans New Orleans. Uh, New Orleans. I can never say it in a way that but satisfies me. Puerto but Rico, anyway, Puerto Rico, um, the Dominican Republic. Yes, Haiti. like this technology should be used right. there, especially after damages, because That's a very good point. It, yeah rebuilds the structure quickly cheaply uh in theory you could just like drive it down the road and like keep printing houses as you go right. um and it would withstand the next severe weather event that's a very very good point wow good application for it yeah for sure um while they're rebuilding it right now maybe that's something that maybe that's something what they're doing let's let's call congress um yeah. but <laughs> it's funny to me because this is done this is the same company we talked about a while back on yeah. long island and so this is semi-local to us. Um, and now they're making the news for multiple things. For and they're multiple really kind houses. Of, yeah, they're the really last kind of house cool they stuff. did was 500 square feet. This one is 1,900 square feet. Okay. So, again, last time I wasn't super impressed. I don't think any of us were super impressed, just to no, speak sir. for everyone else here. Yeah. Um, it, it mostly looked like a, a barracks or a small shed. This has multiple rooms. Mm-hmm. It's 1,900 square feet. That's a little bit more impressive, mm-hmm. in my opinion. So, you know, big growth steps. Time is going to improve all of those things. And, yes. yeah, those companies that are pioneering that kind of stuff are going to learn and uh, lay the foundation for other companies down the road. Uh, but lay the foundation. Uh, uh, yeah, 3D the printing other cool thing house. we haven't talked <laughs> about. <laughs> so after the podcast, the first one about 3D printed homes, we had this guy reach out to us, and he actually makes the material for uh, the cement for the 3D printed homes. Mm-hmm. And I assume there's multiple companies, but he's one of them. I, uh, I, forgot, I forgot his name right share it right now but you have to watch this video he gets regular cement and he puts it on a tray and it kind of just falls down flat and then he gets his cement where it's just like a little mixture it's the same type of cement except with something added with his magic sauce yeah and so he puts the cement down and he can then build it straight up just over a foot high with his hands yeah I think you showed me this video at one point. It was pretty cool. It's mind-blowing because if you've ever <laughs> used cement, you know that you cannot put cement a foot in the air and have it like perfectly flat walls. So whatever yeah. he did, and apparently it's as strong as regular cement too. It just can take it, uh, keep shape a lot I better. Was, I was like 14. My mom wanted a fire pit, and I'm like, don't go buy a fire pit. I can make one. Um, so I got a whole bunch of concrete, and I built a big plywood mold and poured all the concrete in there. Um, and it was way too heavy. And the first time we had a fire in there, all the concrete cracked because I knew nothing about concrete. <laughs> yeah. uh, still don't. Um, my mom still makes fun of me for that. Is it uh, still there? When I visit. Oh, no, no, no. The thing fell apart like within really two fires. Crumbled. I went to college and left the mess there. And my mom was like, would your feelings be hurt if we got rid of this? I was like. It's kind of like throwing away the art project <sighs> in fifth grade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't offended, though. I, I recognize that the project's was not was that's not important good. it that's also important. wasn't like level so it was i'm not good at concrete it's a billion and you're an engineer <laughs> now i feel so safe you're right, yeah, right. You build. <laughs> but i'm not a concrete engineer or a structural engineer or whatever i stick to i stick to what i know there you go. which is 3d printing 